I'll go on record as saying that getting my IFBB Pro card was one of the proudest things I've ever done in my life. Oh my goodness, what a great feeling. But is it worth killing yourself over? Boom! Boom! What's up, everyone? Mark Lobiner, CEO, MTS Nutrition. Check it out. So there's been a lot of talk about if bodybuilding is even worth it. I just did a video on why bodybuilders aren't competing. I actually said it wasn't because of health. Bodybuilders have been taking risks all this time, and they never cared. Like Matarazzo died, all these bodybuilders were dying, and nobody stopped. In fact, Dante Trudell did a video on it's not worth competing for the $15 plastic trophy and whatever it is. And IFB Pro Cards mean nothing. My buddy Nick Trujilli did a response video to that. So this kind of a response video to response video, it's a response squared video. So let me explain why I think it can be worth it getting a buy, uh, IFBB pro card or being a bodybuilder or taking those risks. But I think a lot of people who go overboard because they think magical things happen when you get a pro card or when you become a pro bodybuilder. But in reality, that's just not the case. You know, if you're someone like a Nick Walker or a Phil Heath, or a Kai Green, somebody who gets that stature, becomes a top pro, and is able to speak and effectively market themselves and work beyond that, sure, a pro card's going to help you help. Even if you're someone who's a second tier or third tier pro, who utilizes that IFBB pro status to charge more money as a personal trainer or as a coach or just for status within the fitness industry, being an IFBB pro, it's like going to a conference on medicine and having your doctorate. It just is. Look, as someone who went for most of his life not being an IFBB pro and just getting it in December, it does change. When you tell people you're an IFBB pro, they're like, oh, wow, it's just different. However, none of that shit matters if you're dead. So Dante said something that I didn't know. I haven't confirmed, but he said that doses now versus the 90s are like three or four times higher than what they were, which is absolutely insane because I know what dudes were taking in the 90s. That's when I started in this industry. I'm old as hell. And it was scary back then. But I think now we've added more things. We have the peptides. We have the insulins. We have the this, the that. And it's just more stuff. And I don't know if the guys are getting bigger. I still don't think there's anybody as big as Marcus Rule was. Like, people were big back then. But I think Dante has a point. If you go to local shows, and I've gone, and I've been backstage at them again, I competed as an amateur for my entire life. Well, I mean, I was a NABA pro, but then I retired, whatever. Dude, the guys who look like they will never, ever win an overall in their life, they're on more drugs than most IFBB pros. Like, the drug use by the mediocre bodybuilders is super high. And then you got the guys who are coming up who really put their life and their work and everything they have into bodybuilding and they work to support their bodybuilding habit rather than have bodybuilding be a hobby or bodybuilding for me was a way to kind of augment my business. I started competing in 2007 to help promote my company at the time, Cyvation. We had an intro workout product called Extend. They're now open. They're now owned by the same company that owns Cellucor. So when we were launching that product, nobody was caring. So at that point, I went on bodybuilding.com and did a blog about how I'm prepping for a show. And I won my class at that show. My very first show I won my class. Natural, 100% natural, NPC show. I was also the only guy in my weight class. <laughs> Y'all would have never known. See, for me, it was a way to market my companies. And also, I'd like to, I'd like to go to the drug thing. Look, man, you inject insulin 
And this goes for competitors and people who just do it to get big. I know a lot of people who take insulin and all these different peptides and SARMs I've never heard of. And I mean, dude, look, Cali Muscle wasn't even competing and he was taking insulin and all that stuff. Like, I'm not trying to hard. I've already beat that, 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 that dead horse too many times but like he wasn't really competing but he was taking insulin to look big on instagram insulin instagram just whatever okay and insulin for the gram <laughs> so it's not just bodybuilding competitors but i think we need to look at the fact that a lot of the top elite pros do they take a lot of drugs yes but that doesn't mean that you can take a lot of drugs too and look even close to them. I can take all the steroids in the world. I still won't hit a baseball as far as Barry Bonds. I could take all the steroids in the world. I still won't look like Big Rami or Brandon Curry or Phil Heath. It, it doesn't matter. Like, would I be 10 or 15 pounds heavier if I took bigger, bigger doses of steroids? Absolutely. I'm an HRT guy. It is what it is. This is the best I could do with HRT, and I'm good with that. Um, but I also have different things. Like I know so many people who are single or have one to two kids and they literally work their job not to provide for their family or to provide for themselves, but to sustain their bodybuilding career and the leftovers go to their family or they'll have a spouse or a significant other, or whatever that works. And my question is always, you get your pro card, then what, Right. Kai Green didn't really, obviously being an IFBB pro and winning the Arnold and being second to Phil Heath like 14 times, obviously that helped build Kai Green to what he is, but Kai Green would have been amazing. He would have made a ton of money without that because he's so charismatic. Obviously steroids led at least partly to his physique, but if you think for a second that Kai Green is taking some magical steroid you've never heard of, he's taking the same shit everyone's taking. He's just Kai Green. And I trained for Kai Green once and it took three hours and it was nonstop. And that was sandwiched by an hour of cardio pre and post workout and more steak than I've ever seen a human being eat after training. These guys are just different. What I see is a lot of people who think that getting a pro card is going to change your life. Look, I'm not trying to brag. I'm not, but like before this pro card, I was already successful. My kids already had generational wealth. I'd already built some stuff. You know, a lot of people like, for example, um, my training partner, Courtney, before he had his pro card, he already had a successful training business. He was already coaching, you know, at a local level and doing what he loves to do. The pro card just made it where, and I'm, I'm not speaking for Courtney by any means, but I'm sure Courtney being an IFBB pro doesn't hurt in him being one of the premier trainers in the area. There's very few IFBB pros training here. And um, I personally love training. I love coaching people. I coach for five hours a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday with legacy at carbon.com. And just to let you guys know, <laughs> I am going back in the coaching arena. Just I love coaching people. I love seeing people reach their goals. So I am doing hypertrophy coaching, bodybuilding coaching, lifestyle coaching. Um, you can email me at mark at legacy at carbon.com. Um, but I'm back in the, I just love doing it. And I'd be, my businesses are doing so well and I love working so much. I can afford two hours a day or, you know, whatever, whatever schedule works out to give back like that. But can I charge more now that I'm an IFPB pro for me? Not really. You know, I was already exos. I already have all these things. You know how much people are paying an hour for just having a CrossFit certification. I'm a CrossFit certified trainer. I'm a certification whore. I've learned everything. I could train everybody from a pro football player to a hockey player to a six-year-old trying to learn movement patterns. I just love coaching. Enough about me. Let's get back to, I'm sorry, I get off track, ADHD. So anyway, bottom line is I don't think people who get into bodybuilding, they understand the risks that it takes. And let's say you're natural. Let's say Ronnie Coleman was natural. Throughout his career, I'm not talking about the beginning. Well, he was natural when he won his pro card. Debatable. He says he was. Some people say he wasn't. Not my problem. Do you really think that 290 pounds 
at five foot, 10 inches tall is healthy on your heart. Do you really think that I believe for one second that I'm, I have optimal health. Being a bodybuilder didn't take years off my life, even at the minor doses that I've used. And the fact that I've been pretty much HRT um, for most of my life past the age of 33, 34. I, I know for a fact that to get to this goal, I did some things that might decrease my lifespan. I don't know. We don't have a control group. But I look at it this way, your organs, your kidney, your liver, your heart especially, and you've, for those of you who watch me all the time, I apologize, but it's like a transmission on a car. You might have a Toyota Celica that has a transmission that runs from 1980 till now. It has 500,000 miles on it, but most of the time, transmissions last 200,000 miles. Sometimes shit goes wrong. You don't get the oil changed enough. It lasts for 100,000. Sometimes you get a lemon. It lasts for 50,000. That's a congenital disease. At the end of the day, we're all on borrowed time. Life is a gift and we're here on earth. And that's where it comes down to personal responsibility. If, you're, if you love the sport of bodybuilding, I'll tell you what. I will, if I was supposed to die at 90, I'm cool dying at 80 being an IFBB pro. I reached that goal and my, and I'm the Jack dad, but I didn't take the risks. Not all of them. I took some of them. Just me being 215 to 220 pounds of five foot, seven inches. That's a risk. I'm essentially obese. I am obese. But again, it's, it's weighing goals. Like at the end of the day, even on, you know, HRT dose, I'm the Jack dad. You know, and does it help my businesses? I mean, it helps to be in shape, right? Like, and you could do that naturally. Like, there's a lot of natural athletes who look absolutely amazing. You know, you look at a Kurt Widener who's still out there training people. You look at a Brian Whitaker who's a professor. You look at Kent Beerley who, who's doing his thing. These are some great natural pros. So you don't always have to be on drugs to make this happen. Unfortunately, to be an IFBB pro at a high level, let's be honest here, like you're not going to do it naturally. So there's going to be some risk involved. So I always tell people, and I, I, I tell you this as the old man from the bottom of my heart, who's been through this industry, who started whose first boss was the guy who invented this sport, Joe Weider. nobody else on YouTube can say their first boss was Joe Weider. Jim Stepani worked for Weider. James Grage used to be a BPI, worked for Weider. I don't think, oh, and Mike McElaine, who works with Jim Stepani, was at Weider for a while. But he came after Joe passed away. So very few people can say they've, they've been where I've been in this industry and have the perspective of the sport. Very few people worked every day with the late Peter McGuff. I love this sport. I want this sport to, pr to thrive, but I owe it to you guys to give you the truth. And the truth is bodybuilders are dying, not because, but in part due to their excessive steroid and other anabolic substance abuse. And anabolic substance, I mean insulin, and I could be talking about food. We are putting our systems through so much by eating so much food, by bulking, by dieting, by all this. Is it worth it? I'll tell you what. So this off season, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do my first pro show. I'm going to eat. I'm going to bulk. I'm going to actually bulk. You saw in Eric Konefsky's Arnold video. Um, I weighed in at 237 with clothes and shoes. Let's say I was 232, 233. Nothing. Nick Walker weighs about 874 pounds now. Just kidding. He's like 300 pounds. Dude, I've never felt so toxic and bad. I, I, it wasn't good. I, I lost it in me. I'm like, I got it. I can't do this shit anymore. I felt so bad. Like coaching my kids, coaching my athletes, just getting out of bed sucked. My knees hurt. My elbows hurt. I was out of breath walking up my stairs. I couldn't sprint. I couldn't go on hikes. What the fuck type of quality of life is that? What I recommend everyone does is think about what's worth it. Look, man, 
if you have the genetics to be an IFBB pro and a top one and place top 10 at the Olympia, and this isn't just your mother or your wife or, or your dog telling you this or your bros on Instagram, let's say that Milos or Hani or any of these guys are like, dude, you're the next Phil fucking Heath. Then by all means, man, if you think it's worth it and you don't mind the potential risk of dying at 40 or 50 or 60, by all means, man, YOLO, right? Nick, Nick Trigilli said something really, really fucking great. He said that people say life is short. Life isn't fucking short. Life is so long. I can't remember my fucking childhood. <laughs> like life is long. I've been with my wife for 20 fucking years, 20 years. Like I was with her through having no breasts to having fake breasts, to having no breasts again. That's don't give me that look. My wife had breast implant illness. Okay. So think about it. Like life is long. Like, do you remember kindergarten? I don't remember anything. My wife's like, yeah, I went to that school. I'm, I don't remember. Maybe I'm just an idiot. Maybe I did too many drugs in college. I don't know, but I didn't do drugs in college. That was a joke. Katie gave me a look. Look, man, life is long. And think about like from the years of 70 to 80, I'll be able to watch if I'm in health, if I take care of myself, if I'm like, if I stay in shape and I Jack LaLanne that bitch and I fucking wear jumpsuits and I do all my cardio and I stay in shape, I eat healthy, bro, at 70, 80 years old, I can still play catch with my grandkids or great grandkids, depending on when my kid, my kids have kids, hopefully grandkids. I don't need my daughter having a baby. Grand, wait, 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 wait. If she has a baby at 25. Yeah, we had a bit, we could do that. 70, I could have great grandkids. So I could go and play with my great grandkids. I could do all that stuff. I don't want to fucking die. I don't want to die. And I'm glad that, you know, I retired between the years of 2015 and 2021 because I was able to put all of my eggs in the health basket. I was able to get into boxing, which will probably kill me or give me CTE. But regardless, I got into agility and training. I got my exos. I learned how to move. I made my body feel good. I took care of my heart. I learned all about, you know, viral defense supplements like Ambrosia Vita and Nectar that we make. I learned all about cardio. I, I was a cardio bunny. I was running three miles a day in addition to boxing training, get ready for my fights. I was fortunate enough to catch it, but I can imagine in 2013 when I was knocking down the IFBB pro card door, that at 34 years old or, or 2014, that I would have gone in and I would have done a lot of insulin and all this mega dose. Cause I had the, we had, we weren't rich at, as fuck back then. Like we didn't have that much money, but I had enough money to be able to be like, okay, I'm going to buy a ton of GH, I'm gonna buy all this insulin, which is very cheap. I'm going to buy all this, whatever, testosterone, equipoise. So I could afford the good primo and I could have gone to town. And guess what? I would have looked like me at when I competed at 215 at Masters USA. I would have looked like a 10 pound heavier version of that. So I would have just looked like a bigger piece of shit. What you guys say in the comments about my physique, it doesn't hurt my feelings <laughs> because honestly, I, I, I kind of I kind of have a weird body and I know that. And for me to even go as much as far as I've gone in bodybuilding, taking as little as I take is well beyond what I ever imagined. And, but I didn't do it because I had better genetics. I have good genetics, not amazing genetics. I didn't do it because I took more drugs. I did it because I was consistent. I, I haven't missed a workout since I was 13 years old. Just to give you a heads up, I'm 26 right now. So that's 13 years of not missing what I'm playing. I'm 41. Okay. I never missed a meal that was planned. I've gone off a program where I don't measure my macros, but if I was dieting, I never missed a meal. I always got, I don't think I've gone one day without getting adequate protein. So that's the reason, even though I'm shitty, I'm as not shitty as I am, is that I worked. Do your due diligence. Figure out if it's worth it. It's your life. Just know you have choices, all right? Make the right one for you. If that's dying at 40 years old and being the greatest IFBB pro between the age of 27 and 40, you do you. But if you're like me and you want to live to see your kids, 
you know, have kids and get married and go to college and I'm not going to cry. You're going to be, you're not going to be able to live a bodybuilding lifestyle. Not at that level. Bodybuilding lifestyle, not meaning going to the gym every day, training, having a six pack and chest. You could look amazing. But if you want to be 260 pounds on stage, sorry, this isn't hundred percent, but chances are you're going to die really young. All right, guys, let me, know, let me know your thoughts. Comment down below. Love y'all. If you have any supplement needs like this new Clash 3D, which by the way, speaking of heart health, has something called VasoDrive AP, which was actually formulated for heart health. But because uh, vasodilation and blood flow is heart health, it's actually one hell of a pump ingredient and it has 3D pump. Clash 3D available on tigerfitness.com. I'm Mark Lobliner. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel, tell all your friends about us. And, and again, if I didn't say so, I got bills to pay. I got to buy some trend and insulin. Go to tigerfitness.com and that's out of game. I used to have to go through dozens of bottles of vitamins, of supplements, just to get what I need. Look, I'm busy. I'm running multiple businesses. I'm coaching. I'm a professional bodybuilder, getting ready for my first pro show. I don't have time to sit there and do all that. I gotta go. I'm on the go all the time. That is why I created MTS Nutrition Immortal. Here's how they look. This, all it takes, this replaces dozens of bottles of supplements. And let me tell you exactly what this has. It has probiotics, greens, liver detox, joint support, cardiovascular support, and the most complete multivitamin, multimineral supplement ever created. If you have a busy life or you simply want more time to do the things you love and be able to travel by just taking one simple little pack with you, Immortals for you.